Hi guys, welcome to a new video. Uh, it seems like a while since I've said that and I know that it's been quite a uh, considerable amount of time. Um, obviously my last video was the uh, Ross Embleton interview video, which as you can see from the title is kind of where this topic is going to go um, and what is going to be spoken about in this video. Um, so some context on this, right? Uh, for me, before we get into anything, I'd like to personally thank Ross because my last video was purely brought back mainly for uni coursework and, and things that, uh, you know, I had to do and getting him on there was a massive help for my coursework and for those that don't know, I do a uh, football, media and business degree um, at UCFB at Wembley. Uh, so one of my assignments was to do my own website on a certain topic and then, uh, yeah, Ross helped me out massively on that and I can't thank him enough because he didn't have to take his time out and do that for me um so i appreciate everything he's done for me and he was a top bloke to, to interview and, and to deal with as well and was was just brilliant so i can't thank him enough for that um but some context so this season um because i haven't uploaded i haven't uploaded for a long long time so it's kind of hard to so some people that obviously orient fans watching this will know others of you that aren't an orient fan might not know um, so we started off the season kind of a bit iffy um, and then sort of, I'd say towards the end of October, beginning of November, really hit our stride. Around December sort of time, um, we looked really good and we were into the top seven. We broke into the, uh, the playoff positions. We didn't actually reach the top three, but at one point we were only a couple of points off of the top three. Um, so, you know, at Christmas time, although the schedule now, the games played isn't as many because of the later start date, um, it was a very good position to be in with sort of touching distance on the top three, the January transfer window, um, you know, weeks away. Uh, so we was in a good position and then from there it's kind of gone uh, downhill really. I mean, we brought in some, some good signings. Um, and, and, you know, the owners have invested and backed Ross. Uh, they brought in Adam Thompson from Rotherham, Tristan Abrahams on loan from Newport, Nick Freeman on loan from Championship side Wickham. So, you know, we brought in some decent players, obviously Dan Kemp as well, um, who was on loan at Blackpool uh, as a West Ham youngster. And, and he's come to us on a permanent deal as well. So, so four decent signings for this level uh, and good captures. And um, yeah, so you kind of go from being a really settled, decent squad, uh, sort of competing at the top end. And then you go and add better additions and then somehow we've actually ended up performing worse. So, and that's why this decision has ultimately come and uh, it's part and parcel of management uh, and of football. Um, you know, we've since then we've just been on a massive decline and we've played our last seven games. We've got three draws, four defeats and scored one goal, uh, well, two goals now so but in six games it was one and, and yes two in seven so it is you know obviously alarming for them and I, did I think that they would do and act upon this quick no I didn't um, you know they've shown a lot of faith in Ross and they've made that publicly very clear as a board um, so I thought they'd have, have worked with him given more time and obviously that that just hasn't happened so now you know we've uh, as today appointed Joby McEnough on an interim basis until the end of the season. So for me, where do I stand with that? So there's some things that maybe we should touch upon in this video. And that is a massive point was there was a tweet a couple of weeks ago from an Orient fan who sort of criticised Ross and the tactics and, and how we were playing, obviously in a poor run of form. And, I, and Joby McEnough actually liked the tweet. Uh, he's obviously come out since and apologised and, and said he didn't mean to like it completely, um, which is obviously what he's going to say he has to say that and and obviously he probably he probably didn't mean to do it let's be honest um he's a top professional um but that sort of happened and that was sort of on the decline and when a few fans were sort of getting on Ross's back and, and making things a little bit uh harder for him shall we say um so that happening doesn't make things easier I don't know we don't know what goes on behind the scenes on a day-to-day -day basis who knows but from an outside perspective, he probably didn't mean it. It probably was just a slip of the finger and he probably was just driving home so he couldn't respond quick enough to, to sort of rectify it, but he did clear it up. Um, 
But McInnes' performances in the last few weeks haven't been up to his standard, uh, that very high standard that he sets. When you think about it, he's almost 40 years old. It's incredible that he's going anyway. And to be still one of the best and most consistent players in the squad is, is just a credit to himself and how work how hard he works. So, you know, that... that does that correlate? Is there any sort of coincidence there? His form's dropped. He's like that tweet. You can put two and two together and, and sort of make your own mind up on it. For me, maybe there's some sort of people saying that he stabbed him in the back. I, listen, I, I try to remain impartial on here and, and that. And if you want to sort of get more of my views and go and follow me on Twitter, but I, I always try to remain as impartial as I can be. Um, but... Maybe, I don't know. I, I would say no because of the professional years. So hopefully that hasn't happened because you don't want him to be driven out of the club for you know that reason. And, and for Ross as well, he just deserves the utmost respect and, and, and the gratitude he's shown as well. He just, everybody should feel, you know, appreciative towards him because the, the role he had to step into was just under horrific circumstances that not many managers would have to go through, let alone a young manager who didn't actually want to be the manager, who's sort of learning his trade as a manager. So it, I know that was a bit complicated, but um, it was it was difficult. So he was in a very, very hard position and, and the way he's handled things and how he's actually, we have improved. Um, and it's sad to see this happen, but concentrating on the side of Joby, I think, I think Joby's got a good potential to be a good manager. And if you're asking me right now whether I wanted McEnough in as manager, I'd say no, because I don't want any of the backroom staff, you know, given the job. Because I think we should go for an outsider's perspective who can come in um, and, and get rid of some players. I think there's a massive clear out needed. That could be for another video. But um, there's definitely a clear out needed. And, uh, and there's an, what I think is somebody new to put their own ideas forward uh, to work with a squad. And, and to make a lot of new signings in the summer to improve the squad to go for next season. So that would be my take. Uh, a lot of the names being thrown around, it was very brief, obviously, when you look at some of the odds and stuff, there's not been much of a chance for even that to happen because, you know, Ross was sacked like sort of half five straight after the game yesterday. And now, you know, Joby McEnough was appointed on the Sunday at sort of half two, three o'clock. So there's not been much time. The, like Skybet had off odds for a while. Um, Darren Curry went from nowhere to, to sort of odds on favourite, which was a bit alarming for me. That wasn't a good choice. So I'm kind of glad that's not happened. I'm kind of glad Sender's not got it as well. I would prefer McEnough over them to. But there were other people on there, names that have been thrown about, such as, you know, Cowley. And I, I just don't think that was realistic. You know, he's managing the championship. He wanted the Sunderland job. Is he going to take a step down to it? No, probably not. But the one thing I do say is that... Um, you know, in the current climate that we're in with COVID and stuff, you know, you could maybe go for a bit more of an ambitious appointment. There's less jobs, um, people out of work. And if you offer it and you don't even just declare interest in them, you know, you just offer, you put the contract on the table and see what they say. Maybe it, it might have worked. I don't know. But for me, it's a safe appointment. I understand it. I understand why it's happened. For me, I wouldn't have done it. I would have gone for a manager of their own to give them time to work for this remainder of this season, a bit of a free hit, sort of see sort of the players they're working with, who they want to keep and how we go forward for next season. Um, but, you know, Nigel Travis, the chairman tonight, has come out and said in, a, in an interview that he actually still hopes and kind of almost expects us to finish in the top seven or at least put a serious uh, challenge for the playoffs, which now we sit in 14th, eight points off, Bolton in seventh, so it is difficult when a lot of teams can still make that up. You know, we're sort of, I'd say, probably the last team realistically that could get there. But from 14th upwards to 7th, there's a lot of teams in there that will also fancy their chances as well, who are also on better form than us. So it, it will be tough and it will be a tough ask of Joby to, to as a new manager, establishing himself to, to, to make that. I think for me, I think if he gets to play us, you have to give him the job. Of course you do. But for me, if he doesn't, and this might sound harsh, then for me, I wouldn't because I just, I, I, I like the idea of having somebody new. You know, Joby's a legend. What he's done for this club, you know, captain an entire winning season. Not many players can say that for Orient. So, you know, massive respect to Joby. I'll give him my full support and I'll back him. Of course I will. Uh, and I hope I hope we can do it. Realistically, I think we'll do it. Probably not, no. So that's kind of where we're at. I kind of 
sort of wanted to make this video to kind of update people and I know I haven't been uh, active at all. I haven't been on for about a year. Like I say, I've had things, obviously COVID has happened, so there's not been enough chance to sort of go to games and do that. And uh, I've started university degree. So I've got, I'm quite busy, you know, I'm quite busy. So I'm, I'm going to hope in the near future to actually make some uploads. And if people have any sort of suggestions that, you know, you might want to see sort of reactions after the games on stream. I'm not one of those people that would like to sort of stick a camera in my face and, and while I'm watching the stream and, and react because that's not me. Um, but I kind of like to dig deeper and get my teeth into analysis and, and what goes on and so, sort of, you know, uh, create the bigger picture and give my opinion and express myself that way. Um, so if people want to see that, then I'll, I'm definitely open to that when I have the time. Um, but obviously let me know in the comments if you want to see more of this kind of video where I sort of sit in a camera and talk about what's going on and what's happening. Um, obviously this was just for me to chat and update you guys um, and dust off the cobwebs off the channel as well. But um, obviously, like I say, yeah, if you want if you want to see more of this and you want to see, you know, obviously I'll make the better quality videos for, for that. But this is like I say, just sit in front of the camera and talk about what's going on. But um, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Uh, it's been a long time and I hope everyone's all right. And I hope everyone continues to stay safe. But uh, hopefully we can make the playoffs and uh, it's a massive ask for JB and we'll see what happens. And uh, also, don't forget to like and subscribe as it does help me out massively. And uh, I appreciate you guys. Thank you.